Hi folks, welcome back to my little shop. Today I want to talk about a strategy for dealing with shop scraps. We all have them, little one inch by two inch pieces of hardwood that we're convinced that we are going to use someday and we don't have the heart to dispose of. So we put them on a shelf, we put them in the corner and they build up and they build up. And sure enough, we will use one every now and then, but for the most part, they'll just build up into an enormous pile and whoever administers our estate, they're not going to know what to do with them either. So they either dispose of them, throw them out, or if we're lucky, they'll make a bonfire with them around which everyone will toast our amazing woodworking legacy. We can hope. So I'm affiliated with Whitehill Tools in the UK and they're always coming out with new products from their traditional shaper heads right up to the big CNC kit. But they're also always coming out with new profile knives and they came out with something recently that I just had to try. This is a set of cutters that will let you make all the common size of Festool dominoes. Now, I use a domino regularly, and of course I always buy the dominoes. When I saw these knives, I thought it would be a great way of using up shop scraps. So let's take a closer look. Okay, let's take a look at these knives quickly. The different knife series that Whitehill have have a different letter designation. These profiles are ground on their B series knives, which are the, is the largest collection. These will fit in the ubiquitous 40 millimeter Euro block, but it'll also fit in their 125 by 55 millimeter head as well as the large combi head, which I've talked about on the channel a number of times. So let's get a knife out and take a look. Okay, you see there's two different sections to the knife. So that just helps you get the full width or thickness range of the dominoes. And you can see that the largest one goes right up to the 14 millimeter domino that's used in the domino XL. Now just a quick reminder of course that the profile that you see on the ground knife isn't actually the exact profile that will be milled in the stock because the knife is held on an angle which is often called the hook angle so that distorts the geometry a little bit. But as you can see if you artificially hold the knife on a bit of an angle that represents the hook angle you can see that the profile is milled very accurately. So let's get these in a cutter block and make some dominoes. So since we're still having subarctic temperatures here, I am working in the heated shop, which means using the small machine. Now the table hole is a tiny bit too small for this cutter knife combination. So I'm gonna use a false table as well as a false fence. Now there's an argument to be made for using a false fence for many operations, but this thin, these thin small pieces are especially inclined to want to chatter or dive into the space between the stock fence plates. So breaking through a false fence really gives you what's really the equivalent of a zero clearance insert for a table saw. The false fences are simply attached securely through the back of your stock fences and made out of well-prepared straight flat material. I like straight grain pine because it's easier on the knives when you're breaking through. It's also inexpensive and very stable. If you sand it smooth and add a little bit of wax, it really helps keep the stock moving smoothly. So after breaking through, I'll add the false fence or the false table, get it secured really well, hook up the dust traction and the uh, shaper's ready to go. Now preparing the stock is relatively straightforward. Though I did pick the, the cream of the crop of my scrap pile, aiming really for straight grain material that would give me some knot free stock for machining. Since this isn't really a production run, more of a trial run, I decided to try a number of different species just for the heck of it. After making everything straight and square on the joiner, I planed it down so that the thickness matched the domino widths I was making. And I ripped the stock thicker than needed on my trusty bandsaw and planed it down to final thickness. My planer has bed rollers, so I added in an auxiliary bed to the planer to give me better results on the thin stock. After a little bit of careful adjusting to get the thickness exact, I ran all the stock through. I then hand fed a little bit of stock to verify the shaper setup. And then it was time to swing the feeder in and run the remaining stock. So 
So cutting our long strip of domino to length is a fairly straightforward work working operation. I've uh, tried short things like this on the miter saw. It just doesn't work as well. The bottom side of the blade when you're lifting the saw up likes to grab it and kick it. So I found the table saw to be faster and produce a cleaner result. So this is all pretty, pretty straightforward, uh, but I've gotten a few questions and a few comments on Instagram posts about this deflector wedge. Now I've seen this, um, I first saw this used maybe 20 years ago or something like that in England and I use it all the time. It's very simple um, and as you can tell by the name, it's design, its purpose is to deflect these small pieces mainly away from the back of the blade because um, it can certainly get grabbed there and kick. Now I always have uh, an overhead guard on but you still don't want that to happen. So in the bottom I have three very strong rare earth magnets in there to hold it in place but I also have it clamped. Now this is actually pushed up against the side of the blade but there's no pressure there, it's just barely touching because the carbide teeth of course have a, have a kerf width. When you sever it, the block or the small little component is actually separate from the plate a little bit and will go up there and get in line with the previous ones. Works very well, it's very safe and very handy and when I'm done with it I just stick it to the side of the machine. So let's see how that works. Okay, here's a handful of what I produced today, and there's an original domino for reference. You can see there's quite a variety of material in there. I've got black walnut, I've got white oak, and I've got sugar maple. Now the question is, is what's the best material for making dominoes out of? And I think it'll depend on what you use your domino for. I use my domino primarily for helping to align long edge glups, so strength isn't really a factor there, and I could probably use any material, but I am gonna stick with a good hardwood. If you use your domino, for more sophisticated joinery, you might want to have a good selection of material around. But the good news is the cutters seem to work very well for quite a wide range of material. So what do you think the best materials are for making dominoes? Let me know in the comments below and why. Now, a lot of the business minded folks are asking, does it make financial sense to make your own dominoes? Well, that's going to be a case by case assessment, but I'll say a couple of things. One, once the machines are all set up and ready to go. It's easy to make hundreds of these things per hour. Also, the larger dominoes, which are a fair bit more expensive per unit, uh, don't take any more time really to make, and the materials, remember, are basically scrap anyway. I'll also say that the financial side of stuff isn't really the only reason why you might want to be independently capable of making your own dom dominoes. Just think about all the supply chain issues we've had lately. If you found this helpful, please hit the like button. Please comment and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.